Yum. Good morning. Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl and welcome back to Yarn on the Beach. This is episode 52 and we are at Barefoot Beach, which is in southwest Florida on the border of Bonita Springs and Naples, Florida. This is the Gulf of Mexico behind me and we're waiting on the sun to rise. Good morning, Sarah. The sun's going to come up in the east over the buildings and the trees, but it's quite foggy and cloudy this morning, so I'm not sure we'll actually see the sun, but we will be able to see a beautiful color palette regardless. The colors change here every day, so those of you that join me regularly get to enjoy all the variety of nature's color palettes that I love about coming here in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining. I'm sorry I missed a lot of your names, but I appreciate all of you, and I'm so glad you're here. Annie, Teresa, Julie, Terry, Mary Beth, Anita, thank you all for joining, and I apologize to those of you I've missed. You may notice, thank you, Yvette. Good morning, Faye. You may notice I brought a chair today, but as those of you who join me regularly know, I don't sit in a chair at the beach. I love to sit on a blanket. I bring my grandfather's blanket that is very, very old until it gets a little warmer and then I'll bring something lighter. But in the winter, I love having a wool blanket to sit on at the beach. <gasps> is that our friend? Hi, buddy. I'm not sure if that's Curious George or not, but he sure did slow down for the camera, didn't he? <laughs> Good morning, Diane. Thank you, Anita. This is a new pattern on my website. It's the Serenity Cowl. Uh, the crochet version, I have a knit and crochet version of it, and you can also purchase the yarn kit, which is the Be So Serene sampler kit that comes with eight miniature size balls of my hand dyed organic cotton yarn. So that's the knit one. I'm wearing the crochet one, and I wanted to tell you why I brought a chair. Oh, Donna says my braids are getting better. Thank you. And you know what it is? Uh oh, did I lose my ponytail? I did. I'm finding that these clear little ones are unfortunately not meant to be reused. Julie wants to know how I block this after joining it together. I do it as a double layer. So I lay it flat, fold it in half. And what you, what's important to learn about is that um, when you're blocking something, if you're in a place that has high humidity or not a lot of air circulation, or using a thicker fabric when, oh good Edna, I'm glad you received your package today, that's wonderful. You wanna make sure you have some circulating air on it. So whether you're doing something flat or doubled when you're doing a cowl or sweater or something that has to be doubled because of the three-dimensional quality of it, you wanna make sure you have circulating air on it and that will help it to dry. So I lay this out flat to dry, doubled. I'll take it off so I can show you what I mean. Well, even this one it has to dry doubled, right? Tripled in the twist. So this one, what I did was fold it in half like this. And so as I pinned it out to let it dry like that, I put it either under a ceiling fan or put it in front of an oscillating floor fan. And you'd be amazed at how much quicker your projects will dry as long as you have circulating air on them. So if you're somewhere where you have high humidity and you're worried about mold, uh, not mold, mildew or, you know, that sort of thing, uh, definitely make sure that you're using some sort of circulating air. Some fibers are more friendly to being wet longer, like bamboo, uh, but some fibers are not. So you want to make sure, and animal fibers will even attract other things around when they're wet. So you want to make sure that you get it dry as quickly as possible and the best way to do that is with circulating air. So if anybody didn't know that, I'm so glad I could share that with you this morning. So back to the chair. I brought a chair with me today not to sit in. Um, Annie, I'm not sure about blocking with rice starch because I'm not sure how that would affect soaking into the fibers. You know, fiber is so porous, that's why it soaks in water so beautifully. I would definitely try that with a swatch first to make sure that um, it worked okay. I brought the chair to show you how to wind yarn when you don't have tools. Some of you have tools 
at home and love them. I have tools at home and love them. I do not always have access to tools and some people don't even have tools at home. So I wanted to take the time to explain to you lots of things about what happens when you buy yarn in a hank even before we begin to wind it. But then I want to show you that you can wind it on anything if you can keep it open. Good morning, Linda. Um, sorry to everybody who I didn't say good morning to this morning, uh, but I do mean it. Good morning to all of you. Thank you all for joining. Oh, I untwisted it without talking about it. Let me get it back to the state. It would, you know, my yarns I wind before sending to you just to keep, I realize that everybody is a knitter and crocheter at a different level. And I'll never forget the first time I bought a hank of yarn and wasn't aware of what to do with it. And um, I don't want to ever put someone in that position. So I know it can be daunting if you're not used to it. So I wanted to at least go over all of the details I can think of to show you how to turn this beautiful hank of yarn into a ball of yarn so that you can knit and crochet with it. If you buy it in a twisted hank, it is not ready for knitting and crocheting yet. Okay, so it comes like this. You've got the twist at this end and it's looped into the twist at this end. And we're going to pull it out. Yeah, if you have a second pair of hands, that's really helpful as well. But if you don't have a second pair of hands, what you'll want is someone to hold it out like this and then have to back up. If you have a second person to help you, you'll want them to hold it out like this so that you can unravel it. But if you don't have someone, you can do it on a chair. But before we even get to that part, there's stuff I want to tell you. First of all, once you get into this state, you want to give it a couple of good snaps. And the reason you do that is because you don't know how long it's been sitting there and how long those Let's see, let me show you on another one. Let's say it's been sitting in a box. Let's say it's been touched up by other people. See how all those strands are now getting pushed into other places? You don't know how many times the hank's been touched or handled or what it's gone through in its dyeing, rinsing, and drying process. And you want to give it a couple of good snaps to try to get those strands into their proper positions. This will not help a hundred percent but it will help a giant portion of them get back into their proper place so a couple of good snaps will be a really great tip for getting started now each hank of yarn is tied in a different way from one manufacturer to another from one employee to another everybody has a preference on how they tie yarn and I might even open all of these up so you can see the differences this one is tied in one place but tied like more than a figure eight through the one hank this one is be so tender by the way this is a beast this is be so tender my hundred percent organic cotton worsted weight with that beautiful thick and thin texture but I wanted to show you that this one if you were buying this in the hank form would be tied. This is one tie and it happens to be the actual hank of yarn. It's not an extra tie that you would cut. So for this one, you would untie this and then it's ready to go. But let me show you on another one. This is Be So Brave, my 100% or uh, American Merino wool, worsted weight. And I'm going to show you when I snap this one. See, this has a tie here. It has a tie here and it has a tie here. Two of these are just strands of yarn, little strands of yarn that are tying it together. One of them is the two ends of the hank of yarn. So you would cut the two little ones and then you would just carefully cut this one and then pick one end to unravel from. And then uh, this one is done. This one is done the same, similar to the first one. This is Be So Bold, my worsted weight blend of organic cotton and bamboo. Okay, snap this one. And on this one, it's tied, and it's the same. The similar to this one, it's the actual tie of the yarn, and it's 
tied continuously around the hank. So once you cut it off, then you would weave it through the rest. Oh, Leanne, sorry you're having connection problems. Yes, please watch in the replay so that you can at least still learn the tutorial. Yeah, everybody's connection is different. Anita, if you purchase them for me, they come wound already, except for the sail yarn, sometimes the sail yarn, and it'll stay on there. Um, the Be So Brave, you will, it comes in this form. Everything else is wound for free before it's shipped. Okay, so we've got one ready to go here, and I'm gonna put it on the back of the chair. Oh, now, oh, that reminds me. As I'm making the mistake, which is, what a great opportunity to make a mistake live, because then I can show you how to fix it. The other super duper duper important thing is to make sure you have, it depends on the yarn, Melissa. She asked you just cut one strand. Depends on how the yarn is tied. If it's tied with one continuous loop, you would just tie, either unknot it, cut it at the knot, and then push it all the way through the rest. Or if there are separate pieces of yarn that are tied throughout, then you would cut them. So you have to take a close look and decide what they are. So you want to make sure you have all the strands together. And if you pull on it, it'll usually show you that everything's there. And I'm going to make a mistake on purpose now. I'm going to pull a couple strands to the wrong side because let's say you pick this up uh, a little sloppy and you didn't notice. So I'm going to pull this now and you can see it's not pulling right. See how there's a couple pieces dangling outside of the tension I'm pulling on the ties? That tells me that those strands go to the other side. Uh-oh, I think it's going to rain on us. <laughs> okay. So what, if you make that mistake, what will happen is once you get it on your Swift or you get it on someone's hands, you'll start winding and you'll have tangles. And if you don't know any better, you'll think the yarn came to you faulty. No, what happens is if you don't pay attention to making sure all the strands that are tied together are together and you let some of these come around, you can get a massive tangle before you even think about beginning knitting and crocheting. So now we've got everything in the right direction. I'm gonna put it over my chair and I'm going to untie the knot. If I have trouble untying it, I could always cut it. But I'm gonna try untying first and it depends on the yarn. Some of them are not tied like that. Some of them are tied in solid knots and you will have to cut them. Okay, so we're gonna, and then whichever end you pick is your preference. And uh, start winding it into a ball. I'm gonna try that center pull ball that I showed you guys the other day. And now as you go, if this was on a swift, there would be tension on the yarn. And when there's tension on the yarn, it doesn't tangle as much. Some of these strands might stick together a little bit, but I will tell you, because I snapped it so many times, that alleviated a lot of the stickiness. Now, depending on the texture of your yarn and the fiber content of your yarn, some yarns stick to themselves more than others. Uh, and I can't, I mean, it depends. It depends, it's not just the fiber content. Sometimes it's the thickness of the yarn. A thinner yarn sticks to itself more than a thicker yarn. A thicker yarn is far easier to wind. Also keep in mind the amount of yardage that you're working with is a huge component. Jean uses her husband's arms. Good idea. Yeah, if you have an extra person, not all of us have an extra person or an extra person the exact minute we want to get something done. So it is important to know how to do things, not that it's an emergency, but in a fix, right? Good morning, Steve, thanks for joining. Another thing that I wanted to mention is the amount of yards that something has, has a lot to do with the, the depth and scope of the project that you're on. Think if, and I think that sometimes we forget about what those numbers actually mean. We think yarn as, oh, it's a 100 yard ball, it's a 200 yard ball, or a 100 meter, or a 200 meter, and we just 
we don't try to compare it to the other things that we know that are that length. But if you think of it in terms of a football field, everybody knows how long a football field is, right? Football field is 100 yards, so roughly close to that in meters. Can't think of the number off the top of my head. Um, that's a long piece of yarn. The fact that we are even able to organize something the length of a football field or multiple football fields into a ball and not have and have any success at all with it is pretty miraculous in my opinion. It, it really is. If you put think of it in terms of what the actual length is, it's amazing that we are able to organize something like that at all. Now, having said that, there are things that do come up, right? Once you wind this into a ball, you could still run into problems. If your working yarn and your tail yarn get mixed up in the ball and you don't recognize the red flags that it's starting, you can create another tangle. I'll explain that in a minute. Somebody else wants to see this scarf. This is um, an infinity loop scarf. It's called the uh, Serene Sampler. And it's just a very long loop of single crochet through the back loop only and chain five. It's very long and so I like to double it and wear it around my neck. It's one of the free patterns on my website and if you go to my website the links are in the video description. You can find the free pattern chart and video and yarn kit. Okay, so back to the yarn. Whether you're working from, and we can do a demo on this another day. I think it would be really great to show you whether you're using a store-bought skein. You're welcome. Whether you're using a store-bought skein, a store-bought ball, a hand-wound center pull cake, I think it's really important to learn how to recognize the different facets of it so that you can learn how to handle tangles as they're beginning. When we don't know how to handle tangles, sometimes it's our natural instinct to pull on them, which is the worst. Elizabeth, I'm so glad. You know, these are the topics that seem intuitive once you know them, but if you're just starting out and reading patterns, these are not the things you'll learn from patterns or tutorials. And I think that it's the difference between sticking with a hobby and not. Let's say that you're working on a project that has, a, and your yarn gets tangled and you can't figure out how to fix it. First of all, you're gonna blame the yarn or the yarn company. You're gonna blame anybody but yourself, and not that it is your fault, because you don't recognize how to fix a mistake as they're starting. When something is starting, you have the ability to recognize the mistake and correct it right away. When you don't and you keep going, and this is true with all walks of life and all parts of our life, if you don't recognize the warning size in the beginning, a small problem turns into a gigantic problem. And once it turns into a gigantic problem, you can get disturbed get discouraged about your project, get discouraged about your yarn, get discouraged about your hobby altogether. And so if there's anything that I can teach along the way to help you understand the things you don't learn in patterns, I think it will help everybody learn how to stick with, um, stick with their hobby when, when there's little bumps in the road. So. That's why I thought that I would do this. And if we get through this, okay, it's not really showing up on camera. And this one's not really sticking too bad this morning. Probably not the best color to do <laughs> on a blue chair either. Might have to tilt the camera down a little bit. Oh, then you're not gonna see the water. Let's see, let's pull this down. Bear with me a second here. Yes, Steve, it, it depends, when you're center pull, when you're making a center pull cake from your skeins, what you need to be aware of is that if 
the end tail ends up coming up underneath and getting pulled through with your working yarn, you can ca it'll cause um, tangles. Also, when you're when once you're working through from the center and those wall when the the center is out and the walls start weakening, that and they collapse on themselves, that can cause tangles too. So you want to be always aware of what that cake looks like as it's getting smaller because there's all sorts of things. Loose yarn causes tangles. That's why I snap it so many times before I start doing this. Anytime a, larn, a, a yarn can get loose and mingle with itself, it mingles too much and can cause tangles. I hope that kind of makes sense. I know it sounds goofy. Good morning, Miss Detroit. But it really is a precarious thing. And if you think of it in terms of football fields, like my Be So Fine yarn, let's see if I have a sample of it here. This yarn, the fingering weight, this comes 650 yards in one ball. So if you think about it, that's six football fields to stay organized for a whole project. It's doable, but you have to be watching to make sure that the yarn, so, okay, it's starting to get tangled on itself. And I'm just kind of, you know, finessing, cajoling, wiggling it around. If I had to, I could snap it again, and I might. If it, if it tangles again, I might try to snap it again on the chair. And if I'm careful, I could even take it off the chair and snap it. Bye, Julia. Thanks for joining. Have a great day. Yeah, so even as we get to the end here, it's going to... I will say this has gone really well, but I will also say that it's because of the snapping. Snapping is one of the best tips you can learn for winding yarn. There is no yarn that can't withstand uh, tapping. Well, Ruthie, I, I hope I'm fast. I get lots of practice doing this. <laughs> And I'm not teaching this component. If I was teaching the ball winding this morning, I'd go slower at it. But I'm trying to, sh I'm trying to get through the whole hank here to see. I'm, I want to be able to show you the problems that come up. So the more I can show, the more likely problems are to come up. Bye, Tammy. Thank you for joining today. Hope to see you soon. Oh, Steve said my tip for uh, putting his patterns in a binder helped him. Wonderful. I'm so glad. Hi, Maria. You notice this chair has lots of goofy things on it, too. Great for uh, hanging out in the sun, but not so great for winding yarn. <laughs> so if you have a choice of chairs, find one without a whole lot of bells and whistles on it. Like I've got metal hinges down here, face loop thingy, another hinge over there. If you can find something smooth, that would be more ideal than this. Although anything's doable. Any surface that you can slide the whole round hank over, you can do this. I love being able to just pick things randomly and treat them like tools. It's very MacGyverish. <laughs> Not really. I just still like to think about MacGyver sometimes. I love the concept of that. Bye, Steve. Have a great day. Yes, Jenny, a yarn swift is wonderful to have. It is. But imagine if you were somewhere where you didn't have access to it or uh, Amaritha puts it on her knees. That's another great way to do it. Unless you think you're gonna to have to get up in the middle of it, then yeah, I know one of my ponytails fell out. <laughs> I reused one of these plastic ponytails and I don't think that they're meant to be reusable, which is a bummer. No wonder they come in a box of a hundred. I love how see-through they are, but I don't like the fact that they're only good for one use. I probably won't purchase them again.
Yes, exactly. There's lots of reasons why it's not convenient to pull out your yarn swip and all, all sorts of things. What if you're in the middle of hosting a party and you don't have a surface? What if you're working on any number of things? Or like uh, Jenny said, it's too far into her storage system, um, storage area. I mean, there's a hundred reasons why it's not always convenient to pull out your tools. Or if you're not home, what if you were on vacation or what if you were visiting a friend and they needed help and you didn't a good, oh, welcome from Sweden and England. I missed that. Thanks for joining for the first time today. Let's say you're trying to help a friend out or you're somewhere else. There's all sorts of reasons to know how to work things on the fly without your proper tools. You never know when you're going to need it. Okay, so now we have a center pull ball. Donna, yes, I have tutorials on a couple of my market bags. So, and there it will pull out the center. Now, you see I'm starting to get something tangled. I probably didn't do it as um, loose as I should have in the center because I was talking about this. You need to focus on every aspect, right? So there we go. Just needed to cajole it a little bit and now we've got a smooth sailing center pull ball yes Karen anytime you can do yarn wine yarn by hand you can learn so much more about the yarn that way I agree so that's that any chair will do preferably a chair that's smooth that doesn't have a lot of snags on it but if anybody has any questions either now live or in the recording by all means ask them I'm happy to help you in any way I can if I know the answer. If I don't, I'll tell you and try to find it. And if I still can't find it, good morning. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, for those interested today, I'm drinking peach green tea with uh, fresh slices of ginger. Very zingy and spicy and hopefully give me lots of good energy for today. Looks like we've had lots of new people today. Thank you all for joining. I'm so glad. I hope that everybody could learn a little bit about winding yarn today. Maybe learn a tip or two. Even if you already wind yarn by hand, maybe I was able to share a little something with you. I see someone else likes the MacGyver <laughs> uh, uh, example. Okay, let's take this last minute now to enjoy this spectacular view. We've got a very misty, blue gray nature palette today let's just soak in one more minute of the sound of the waves in this beautiful palette Thank you everyone for joining me this morning. I have enjoyed this so much. I love the beach and I love being able to share it with you. Hope you enjoyed my tutorial and the sound of the waves. I appreciate your time so much. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.